Hi everybody, this is Simon Ward of the TriathlonCoach.com and I'm back today because if you're an outlaw competitor you probably realise that there's just over seven weeks or just under seven weeks to go until your big day. Now I've divided you into two groups, that might be wrong for me, but I think that essentially you fall into one of the following categories. You're either a novice, so that's the first time you've covered the outlaw distance in an event, or you're an experienced athlete, in which case you're coming back for another go. Being a novice, my recommendation is that you don't have a target time other than finishing before the cutoffs for each event. And if you're an experienced athlete, then obviously use your previous race to give you some idea of what you're going to be aiming for on July the 27th. Behind me on the board, I've got some more in-depth data that we're going to cover now. So let's look at it, bearing in mind the two groups. So for novices, it's important that you know what the cutoffs are. At one step beyond, they are a little bit more generous. So when you come out of the swim, as long as you get out before the cutoff, that's fine. And then they'll give you a little bit more time before you have to be out on the bike. But it's up to you to know those, uh, like it is with the bike cutoff and the final time when you need to cross the finish line. Those details will be in the athlete notes, which you can find on the website. You'll see a link for that on the screen in a moment, but I really implore you to read those details in advance. So know the cutoffs. Once you know the cutoffs, can you do the distance? Can you swim 3.8k? Can you ride 180k? Can you run and walk and shuffle 42 kilometers? You may not know that at the moment, so it might be a good idea to give yourself a little test. One of my suggestions, and that I've used successfully with other athletes, is to have what I call the long weekend. So Friday will be the day of your long swim. If possible, go and do it in open water with your wetsuit. On Saturday, on your race bike, you'll try to ride 180k. And on the Sunday, I'm not suggesting that you run a marathon here, but probably if you can cover 30k, then you'll be fine. Okay, so do that on the Sunday, and then you, that will give you confidence. Try to do it within at least four weeks before the race, not in the final four weeks, because you do need time to recover. Now, the more experienced athletes, you're going to have an idea of some sort of target time. So let's say you're going for 12 hours, and let's say that's going to be broken down as a 75-minute swim, and a 6-hour 15 bike, and a 4-hour 30 run. I think that adds up to 12 hours, and will include transition times. So if those are your target times, you need to know how that's broken down. 75 minute swim, what does that mean in terms of pace per 100 metres? 180k in 6 hours 15, what's that in miles per hour or kilometres per hour? And a marathon in 4 and 3 quarter hours, what does that work out at in your kilometre per hour pace? You need to know that because the next thing you need to do is include that in your pacing strategy for your event and that's what you should be doing in your key training sessions between now and the event. Okay, making sure that you're comfortable. If you have a power meter or a heart rate monitor, make sure that your intensity factor for that training session is around 0 0.7. Okay, if it should be 0 0.7 of functional threshold or, not, or around 70% of maximum heart rate. Because if it's higher than that, you're going to struggle on the run. So those things should be worked out in advance so that you know your strategy is robust. For all of you, you're going to want to do some key sessions. Now, at this late stage, it's not about intensity, it's about distance. If you haven't yet, then you should be working up to those distances, particularly on the swim and bike, not necessarily on the run. I recommend on the run, probably running no more than two and a half hours in a session, and maybe not every week. Um, as some supplementary sessions, you can boost your fitness with some intensity, probably going up to around um, long intervals of 10 or 15 minutes, particularly on the bike and run, at around 80 to 85 percent of your max. Um, you should be training on a course or on routes that bear a similar profile to the outlaw. So on the bike it's essentially flat with a couple of um, a couple of hills. On the run it's flat. Of course on the run, if you've read the course documents, you'll know that it's partly hard packed tow towpath next to the river and uh, tarmac. So make sure you run on both. Open water obviously in a lake. So make sure that you are using those same things in your training. And be using the race kit. So make sure that you're out on your race bike all the time, getting used to the aero position for long periods. 
make sure you're wearing the wetsuit you intend to use for race day, make sure you're in your running shoes and the race kit that you intend to use so that you know whether it rubs and you can get that sorted out. And finally, your nutrition. One step beyond, use High Five, and that's what will be provided on race day. So if you're going to use that, make sure that you've tried it in advance. Make sure you know what's on the course, which again you can find from the website. If you're going to be self-sufficient and use your own nutrition, then make sure you've tried that in practice as well. Okay, that's it for now. I will be back with other videos, but I hope that's uh, proved useful. Um, if you've got any questions, send them to One Step Beyond and they'll send them on to me. But until next time, happy training, stay healthy. Bye-bye.